Good morning. Welcome to Grace Christian Center. We are going to be in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3. And this morning, I'm going to be preaching a message that is eerily similar to how Israel was in held bondage to sin, to disobedience to God. Many years ago, Israel was all, they've always been promised the blessings of God, but at times they would always find themselves in, walking in disobedience to God, Israel. And again and again and again, God would speak to them through the prophets to lead, bring them back to, to, to unity, to fellowship with Almighty God. And many times they would come back, but then they would walk away. Well, towards the book of Zephaniah, when we get down to the end of the Old Testament, with the return of Christ soon to come within the next several hundred years we find Israel in a, in a state of mind once again where they are walking in disobedience as a nation to God they're walking in disobedience as a nation to God and God is speaking to a nation in disobedience but yet God finds a remnant in the nation he finds a certain number of people who have remained faithful to him and as, and as the Lord revealed this to me last night, it's no different than from what's happening today in the United States of America. Today in the United States of America, we have received the promise and the blessing of Almighty God. Amen? For a, 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 the United States is, a, is, a, is in its infancy as a nation. We haven't been around very long. Looking at the history of other nations around the world. We haven't been around that very long. But in such a short period of time, we have come to become a land that flows with milk and honey. In the very beginning, this nation was founded by men who believed in God, who had seminary degrees to be pastors, many of them. I believe of, of, the, of the founding fathers that, that penned their names on the Declaration of Independence, I believe 30 plus men had seminary degrees. They were raised up in the ways of the Lord. Times were very different back then in the early part of the United States of America. They believed in God. They worshipped God. They honored, honored God. You can go to Washington, D.C. and you can look around all around Washington, D.C. and you can find through statues, through, through many different locations, historical locations, how every, everything points to God. Everything was honoring to God. But now we've come to a point in America where our leaders, whether they be Republican, Democrat, or Independent, our leaders as a whole have abandoned the, the holy place of God. That they've walked away from what God has freely given to them, entrusted to them, to honor Him with. And we can clearly see in the United States of America how this nation is declining Physically, spiritually. Abraham Lincoln, in my opinion, one of the greatest presidents that ever lived, wrote that, that as a nation, that if we were to decline, it would be from morally, from within morally. That we would decline that way. And that we would fall from within. We've seen how many nations throughout history have done that. But we look at the book of Zephaniah, and we see how Israel was the same. The story between Israel and the United States of America is the same. They were built on the promises and blessings of Almighty God. The exact same. But yet, if we look in the book of Zephaniah in chapter 3, it, sees how, it shows how God addresses the problem, He deals with the situation, but He speaks to a chosen few who remained faithful. And I believe today, on the United States of America, there are a chosen few. That There's a remnant. There's a certain number of people in the United States of America that are praying. They're on their knees. And they're, it's withholding the hand of God from bringing total judgment upon this nation for the time being. I believe judgment will come upon eventually upon every nation on the face of this earth. I believe that. But God is patient, not wanting no one, no one to perish. I believe we're living in the most incredible time in the history of the world. More incredible than the times of Noah, than the flood. More incredible than the times that even Jesus Christ walked on the face of this earth. I believe we're walking into a time right now where it is incredible. 
I believe, this is my opinion, now I step apart from the word, I believe, in my opinion, I believe the Antichrist is alive on the face of this earth right now. I believe he is already involved in politics. I believe he is a man who is, who is breathing, who is alive. Who, he, has, he has some type of a power already, but it's unknown who he is right now. That is my opinion. Now, I step back in, out of my opinion, and I say that we are living in a time where we will see the return of Christ for his church very, very soon. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that. Many churches are busy not preaching the Word of God. They're busy trying to build up organizations and, and meet quotas and budget plans. And, and you have such beautiful buildings and people filling them, but yet not no one's name is being written in heaven. I say this because it's been written in the book of 2 Timothy that this is what would happen. That we would, in the days of the return of Christ, that the state of the church, the condition of the church, would be an apostate church. It would be a church that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. As Christians, we have to stand and look in America and look at our surroundings, look at the churches that we're surrounded by. Are they really doing the work of the Lord? Are the hearts of the leaders, of the ministers, of the, uh, of the pastors, are they really in the will of God? As we read in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 1, the word says, Woe to her. He's speaking to Israel first. It says, Woe to her who is rebellious and defiled, the tyrannical city. She heeded no voice. She accepted no instruction. She did not trust in the Lord. She did not draw near to her God. Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are wolves at evening. They leave nothing for the morning. Her prophets are reckless, treacherous men. Her priests have profaned the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The Lord is speaking to Israel. And I believe in a very similar way, in this very same context, the Lord is speaking to the United States of America. If we look here, God is saying, you're a rebellious nation. You've defiled. You're a tyrannical city. What does that mean? That you're a city that, that boasts to have everything. That you never sleep. You know, we can go to Vegas. You can go to New York City and the, 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 the lights never go out. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You've heard of that. This is a city. It, the, Israel was a city, was a nation that just had everything. They boasted and what they could do and what they could have. And God says in verse 2, but you heeded no voice, no instruction of the Lord. You walked away from the instruction that the Lord had built you upon. You walked away from that. And God is saying He speaks to four types. And see now, somebody's, you know, again, the Lord gave me this about midnight. And see, the Lord spoke to the nation of Israel in four ways. In verse 3, it says, her princes are roaring lions. Her judges are wolves at evening. They leave nothing for the morning. Verse 4. Her prophets are reckless, treacherous men. And her priests have profaned the sanctuary. It, God speaks as a, to a nation. God speaks to the prince, the judge, the prophet, and the priest. There is no division of church and state. America is, is, is filled with a saying, there has to be division between church and state. Think about that really. And many, you listening by the way to the video, internet, you may have caught yourself saying there, there's got to be a separation of church and state. Think about it. Where is God make His presence known? In His church. Not, not this building, but in His church, in the body of, of, of Christ. You are the body of Christ. You are the church. But yet, there's been a saying going around America saying that we want to separate God from government. But you look at the word of God, God speaks to the prince. He speaks to those in authority, the prince. Then he speaks to the judge, those of the law that distribute the land throughout the law. Watch this now. Then he speaks to the prophet, the man who is supposed to speak truly, absolutely, 100% the word of God. And then he speaks to the priest, to the pastor, the one who are in charge of the flock. God makes no separation of church and state in this text. He speaks... To the president. He speaks to the senator. He speaks to the Supreme Court justice. He speaks to the pastors and prophets. He says, this is the instruction. You must follow the word of God. There is no separation. But in America, we can see they want, they, they want to have a separation. We can look at Saudi Arabia. They are one in mind, one in thought. Amen? They, they do not operate the way the United States does. Saudi Arabia, the, the leaders are Muslim, um, the, 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 they worship it. the Islamic faith, the government 
Everybody, the people, everybody, it's one mindset. But in America, it's you can do your thing, you can do your thing. There's many ways to God. There's not many ways to God. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Now, I don't want to sound like a religious zealot. I speak from a heart that God has given that we must understand that we are living in very, very dangerous times. Where truth is being compromised. Where, where truth is not being spoken. Truth will set you free. It, it will convict you to the core. Truth will convict you to the core. The truth, the God's word is truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. If, if you read the Bible and apply it to your life, it will, it will convict you. It will show things in your life where, wow, I'm living wrong. But if you allow it to take its process, it will set you free. From, from confusion, from depression, from anger, from all those things that are trying to destroy you right now. All of those things. Addictions, pornography, you name it. Drug addiction, perversion, let's, the list goes on and on and on and on. Hatred, anger, strife, greed, maliciousness, deceitfulness. We, we can go on. God wants you to be free from those things. He loves you with a passion. He wants to give you a life that you never thought you could have. People think, well, I got to try and do it this way. I got to go that way. But the Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Verse 5. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 5. The Lord is righteous within her. He will do no injustice. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He does not fail. But the unjust knows no shame. The Lord speaks to, to, to the nation verses 1 through 4, but then in verse 5, the Lord changes direction. The Lord says, but I am faithful. The Lord says, I do what I say I'm going to do. Everything The Lord is saying in this verse 5 alone, the Lord is saying, everything I do is, is right. It's not unfair. You may have gone to court over a certain situation and the judge was unfair with you. Amen? But God is a fair judge. He rules rightly and justly. Many of you, and you listening by way of the internet on the video, somebody may have done you wrong. But God sees it. And God knows it. And if you leave it in the hands of the Lord, you'll receive peace. And God will bring forth justice in His time. Amen? Verse 6. The Lord says, I have cut off nations. Now you're fixing to find something here. I have cut off nations... Their corner towers are in ruins. I have made their streets desolate with no one passing by. Their cities are laid waste without a man, without an inhabitant. I said, surely you will revere me and accept my instruction. So her dwelling will not be cut off according to all that I have appointed concerning her. But they were eager to corrupt all their deeds. The Lord is saying here, I will bring forth hardship on a nation. I will bring forth the towers. It says here, I've cut off nations, their corner towers are in ruins. Many, uh, ten years ago, our towers fell. Look at what the word says. I will, the corner towers are in ruins. The corner towers shall fail. When 9-11 happened, it, it, was, it was a symbolic thing of what God allowed to happen. God didn't cause this to happen. God allowed it to happen. To get our attention. If you read verse 6 through 7 in its context, the Lord is saying to Israel, now listen, please listen to me. The Lord is saying to Israel, I allowed hardship, terrorists, I allowed these things to come upon you, Israel, to get your attention, to come back to me. And that is the same thing what has happened 10 years ago in this nation, over 10 years ago. God allowed an attack that totally blew our minds away to get our attention as a nation to come back to God. In the last 10 years, we have seen such a spiritual battle in America like unseen before in the history of the United States of America. You know I am right in what I'm saying here. We are at the end of an age. Not the world of an age. A new age is about to come. We have many in government that are saying we need a change. Change is coming, this and that, and it definitely is, but not according to what you would want it to be. I believe this year, the United States of America, along with the rest of the world, will take a plunge into the depths of darkness unlike ever before. Unlike ever before. I am not a prophet, but I am a watchman. And I do know and hear what God is saying. The Bible says, They who have an ear, 
Let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We as a church, you, me, we, the church of Jesus Christ, because we believe, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died and rose from the dead for the payment of our very sin. Because we, the people, because of that, the benefit of that is that we have salvation. But not only that, we hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the world. We have the message of the gospel to bring forth to people who are headed straight to hell. This is as real as it gets. For some listening by, the, by video, this may be the last time you ever hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you not come into a love relationship with Christ to change you, to transform you, to make you a brand new creation, if you don't accept that, you're lost forever, for eternity. And God loves you. He loves you with a passion. Don't come to God the way the religion says to come. Come to God the way God is speaking to your heart right now. Come to God the way God is speaking to your heart right now. Come to Him. He, he, he speaks throughout the New Testament. Come out. 2 Corinthians and in Revelations, God says, Come out. Be separate among them. Be separate. The Lord cut off the nations. The Lord struck down the corner towers. The Lord has struck down our corner towers. They fell in 9-11. Nations have been abandoning fellowship with, with, with America. Now we don't have the respect that the, the value of our dollar has dropped. You, the security of America has dropped because we're walking away from the Lord. If we say we're Christians, if we say we're Christians, if we say we're Christians, then let us show it. The book of James says you must walk. You must do what you confess to believe in. You must be doers. You must do it. Verse 8. Therefore wait for me, declares the Lord. For the day when I rise up as a witness, indeed, my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out on them my indignation, all my burning anger, for all the earth will be devoured by the fire of my zeal. Now, God spoke to Israel in here, and He said, I'm going to bring forth my judgment, my burning anger, I'm going to devour this whole earth. Now, th this isn't a two-part. God was speaking to Israel then, but now God is also, in the same way, God is also speaking to a future yet to come in this time. And He's also speaking to the past. You see, that's the thing about the Word of God. That's why they call it the living Word. Because people from 2,000 years ago, from 1,000 years ago, has read the Bible and it spoke to them. It, it met their situation right there and then. The same way we do it also. It speaks to us. It's the living Word. See, we can read verse 8, and this is what I believe the Lord is saying in regards to us today. The Lord is saying in verse 8, He's saying, I will rise up as a witness. I rise up as a witness. God is saying, I rise up as a witness. When did God rise up as a witness? When He came in the man of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? He came to the face of the earth and goes, I'm, I, I'm, I'm the witness. I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. Jesus was a witness to the world. He came. But He said, I'm going to gather the nations. I will assemble kingdoms. And I will pour out on them my indignation, my burning anger. There is judgment now coming upon the face of this earth. There are people who live mockery lifestyles against God. They're walking under judgment. And we see it happening now. Jesus said in Matthew 24, mother will rise up against daughter, father will rise up against son, and you know, the hand will be against the family, against each other. We see that happening all the time now. Where parents are killing their children, children are killing their parents. We see this happening. And God is allowing this to happen because it's, the, sin is coming to a fulfillment. When, you, when sin abounds, death comes. And we see so much sin happening in the world, death is coming. But there's also life. As a Christian, you as a Christian, the light within you is greater than the darkness around you. You do not have to walk in fear as a Christian in this world, being afraid that the darkness will engulf your life. No. Greater is He that is in you than he who is in the world. And no weapon formed against you shall ever, ever, ever prosper. Now that is the way to live in this world. To believe in the promises of God so that you may walk in the blessings of God. So that it will result in life of not only for yourself, eternal life, but also for your family, for those you love, for those you hold dear to your heart. 
That's what it's all about. God is wanting to save you to save others. He says something here, for all the earth will be devoured by the fire of my zeal. When I read that, the Lord spoke to me. He says, all the earth will be devoured by the fire of my zeal. John the Baptist was going around preaching the gospel in the days of Jesus. John the Baptist was actually Jesus's what? Come on, talk to me. How are they related? They were cousins, right? And John the Baptist was out baptizing. He was outside of Jerusalem because what he was doing was of God and they didn't want none of, none of that. And a lot of times, people will push out the work of God from their living place. So John the Baptist had to go out into the desert. And he was baptizing. People were going from the city, from civilization, they were going to meet God out in the wilderness to, to find God, to, be, to, to receive forgiveness, to receive just redemption. And John the Baptist, he was saying, I baptize with water, but there's going to be someone who's greater than I. He's going to baptize you with what? With the Holy Spirit and with what? And with fire. And when Jesus Christ, when he rose from the dead, when he ascended back to heaven in the book of Acts chapter 1, Jesus says, wait for the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit shall come upon you with what? With power and with authority. Not to brag around says, give me this Lexus, this is mine. Oh, give me this $200,000 house in the name of Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the power and the authority that God is wanting to give you to trample over snakes and scorpions and all powers, the demonic powers in this world. God wants you to live in victory through, through glorifying Christ and walking upon the, the, the heads of serpents. And all demonic powers. That's what God is wanting for His church. That's what He desires. He told Peter, Upon you, Peter, I will build this church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Now you got to ask yourself, are the gates of hell coming against you this morning? Or do you feel like the gates of hell are just rattling, and you just your knees are shaking? Is that how you are this morning? God is saying, you don't have to live that way. 